Hello everyone. In this video, we have this challenging problem. We are given m to the power n minus n to the power m is equal to 17. And we have to find the values of m and n where m and n are integers. Before we start, if you are new here, please subscribe to my channel and also like the video. Now let's get started. First, let's analyze the problem. We are given m to the power n minus n to the power m, which is positive on the right hand side. So what it means is that the whole of this one is greater than this. That is how come we have positive number here. So from here, we can also say that m to the power n is greater than n to the power n. And this could also be true if and only if n is also greater than m. Even if we don't know that here is positive, this is greater than this provided n is greater than m right now from here let's go ahead and then let x equal to m to the power n and then y equal to n to the power m where x and y are also integers so the equation now becomes x minus y is equal to 17. Now this x could be written as square root of x squared minus y is also the same as square root of y squared. And this is equal to 17. On the left hand side, we have difference of two squares, which could be expressed as square root of x plus square root of y times square root of x minus square root of y. And this is equal to 17. We have the product of two factors giving us 17. So Let's go ahead and then write this 17 in such a way that we we'll get a product of two factors, right? And we see that 17 is a prime number. So the only factors to this one are 1 and 17. So prime factors, they have only two factors, 1 and the number itself. From this equation over here, we represented the whole of this one by x and then this one by y. Since this is greater than this one from this expression over here, we can say that x is greater than y as well, and y is also greater than 0. And because of this one, we are not going to consider the negative factors, right? Now, one important thing you should note is that the whole of this is greater than this factor, right? So considering these two factors, this is for this one. We can form two equations out of that. And then this factor is equal to this, right? So we can have square root of x plus square root of y is equal to 17 as our equation 1. Then we can also have square root of x minus square root of y is equal to 1 as our equation 2. Now from here, let's go ahead and then sum the two equations. We have square root of x plus square root of x. That will give us 2 square root of x. Then square root of y minus square root of y. That is 0. And this is equal to 17 plus 1, which is 18. Now let's go ahead and then divide through by 2. So that this and this will go. We have square root of x is equal to 9. We are looking for x, so straight away let's raise each side of the equation to the second power so that we will get x is equal to 81 because this and this one will go. So now that we know the value of x, we can easily find the value of y. So from equation 1, we have square root of y is equal to 17 minus square root of x. So we're going to have square root of y is equal to 17 minus square root of x is 81. So we're going to have 81 here. So we have 
square root of y is equal to 17 minus 9 giving us 8. So we have square root of y is equal to 8. We are looking for y, so like we did before, we will raise each side of the equation to the second power so that this and this will go. Now we have y is equal to 8 squared, which is 64. So now we know that x is 81 and then y is 64. But remember, initially we let x equal to m to the power n, right? So when x is 81, we're going to have m to the power n is equal to 81. Likewise, we also let y equal to n to the power m. So when y is 64, we're going to have n to the power m is equal to 64. Now, m to the power n is equal to 81. On what conditions can this be possible? This can be possible when m is equal to 9 and then n is equal to 2. This will give us 81. Again, this will be possible if m is equal to negative 9 and then n is still 2. This will also give us 81. Then another condition for this equation to be true is that m should be negative 3 and then n should be 4. This will also give us 81. And lastly, m should be 3 and then n should be 4. This will also give us 81. Right. So let's keep this and then let's move on to this side. We are giving n to the power m is equal to 64. This equation over here will also be possible if n is equal to 8 and then m is 2. This will give us 64. Then n should be negative 8 and then m should be 2. This is also a true statement. n should be negative 2 and then m should be 6. This statement is also true. And lastly, n should be 4 and then m should be 3. And this is also a true statement statement but remember in the question it was given as m to the power n minus n to the power m should give us 70. so looking at all these possibilities if we take one equation on this side the base and then the power if we interchange them it should be found here and that will satisfy this equation over here so we see that we have 9 to the power 2 which is not found here. So automatically this is cancelled. Then we have negative 9 to the power 2, which is also now found here. So this is also gone. Then we have negative 3 to the power 4, which is also not found here. So this is gone. Then if we take this last one, we have 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81, right? So this term over here, if we interchange their position, it should be found on this equations right so we see that 3 to the power 4 if we interchange them we're going to be getting 4 to the power 3 which is found here right so it means that the whole of this one will not be considered so we can have 3 to the power 4 which is equal to x and it is also the same as m to the power n over here is 3 to the power 4 then minus n to the power m which is also y, and it is giving us 4 to the power 3, right? So we're going to have 4 to the power 3 here, and this must give us 17. So comparing this to this and then this one to this, we can straight away see that m is equal to 3 and then n is equal to 4. Just like we stated before, n must be greater than m from here n must be greater than m and it is true right n is 4 and then m is equal to 3 now if we test we see that this one is giving us 81 then minus 4 to the power 3 which is 64 and if we subtract this from this one we're going to be getting 17 as the correct answer if you found this video useful subscribe to my channel for more videos 
thanks for watching give this video a like and also see you again on the next video take care bye bye